Thank you so much for joining me. This is the Body, Mind, and Spirit channel. I'm Cynthia, and I bring you my third and final part to my series, Love's Perpetual Flame. Just when we think that we know it all, that we are destined to never find happiness and to live our lives in solitude. Fate will have an uncanny way of showing up in our lives. It will bring a host of unseen forces that prove miracles can and do happen. Frances was 50 when she found out her husband had kept a mistress for many years. When the marriage ended, she was living in a very small apartment in near poverty. She was determined to put her life back together, attending work during the day and school at night. She was busy rebuilding her life. One morning she woke up and couldn't feel her legs. Within four hours, she was diagnosed with the neuromuscular syndrome, Guillain-Barre. Several hours after that, the paralysis had traveled up through the rest of her torso, her arms, and her neck. She was unable to move a muscle and told me that her entire life had flashed before her eyes and that she knew her destiny was to be a state-run nursing home for the rest of her life. She told me to go back to her apartment to pay her bills to make phone calls to family and friends, and she would plot the course of her life from there. Later that afternoon, while I was working on everything for her, the phone rang, and a very pleasant young man was on the other end of the line telling me that he wanted to see Francis. And I told him that it was impossible as Francis had been in, admitted into the hospital and that she was very sick. But I would relay the message. When I got to the hospital that evening, she was adamant that I tell him that she never wanted to see him again. They had one date. It ended on a very sour note. He had told her that he was not sure he would ever call her again. And she had said, fine, don't bother because I don't care. As the weeks passed, Michael continued to call. And when it came time for her to be transferred to the rehab center where she would spend the next seven months of her life, he simply would not take no for an answer and told me to meet him in the lobby 
as she was being transferred. So I got to the rehab center. I was waiting for the ambulance to deliver her and for her to be checked in. And there stood this very attractive, six foot tall, blonde haired, blue eyed man in his 30s with a bouquet of red roses and a box of chocolates. I knew at that moment that he was going to be her husband. And when they brought her in, he barged through and followed her into the room and told her how much he loved her and what a mistake he had made and that he was so sorry for the way he had acted on their date. And he said this in front of everyone that was attending to her. And you should have seen the looks on all of the nurses' faces. In the months that followed, Michael and Francis became the talk of the hospital. So much so that her doctors began to write day passes and Michael would push her in the wheelchair to his car, open the door, and very gently lift her up into the seat and take her out for a day of lunch and shopping. As the months passed, Valentine's Day approached. And that afternoon, he walked in with another bouquet of red roses and a beautiful, small red velvet box. And in that box was a heart-shaped engagement ring. In the months that followed, Frances began her mobility in her hips, her upper torso, and her arms and hands. After she was discharged from the hospital, they married. And she began the healing process. She was fitted with leg braces. And she began to walk in a walker. Eventually, she was able to walk without the walker with the leg braces and a crutch. And this was a very big accomplishment for her. My mother credited Michael's love to her healing and helping her to regain some of her lost mobility because of his unconditional love that he gave her. Michael was 15 years younger than my mother, and my mother was completely disabled and poverty-stricken. 
Yet, they found their way to one another. Michael and Francis have both gone on, but I will never forget what he told her at one point in their life on one of their anniversaries. He said, no matter what happens or who goes first, I will wait for you. And if I go before you do, be prepared because I will be on the other side waiting. Michael did pass on before my mother. And she passed on 10 years after he did. I will never forget the flowers after her funeral. They were so full of life and permeated the room with the scent of rose. I saved some of those flowers. I took them home with me. And I noticed as they began to die that the scent was actually becoming stronger than it had been when the roses were alive. The more they wilted and withered and became dry, the stronger they became. That was the message to me that love beyond the physical form, beyond death, is perpetual. That flame of love is never ending. In love, I wish you your heart's desire on your journey.